The first clap of thunder was about four o'clock in the morning. And I got up and I went outside onto the deck and took all the cushions and put them away. Um, but I didn't go outside to grab my trees. But when I woke up this morning to take my run, there was another thunderstorm system coming through and it was probably about 10, 15 minutes away. So I didn't run outside, I ran inside. But before I did that, I took all my succulent trees and brought them inside so they wouldn't get doused with all this rain we've had today. So it is the afternoon now and I'm gonna go ahead and put these trees back on the benches because uh, the winds are blowing lightly, the clouds are breaking up, and I think we're done with the rain for today. So we wanna get more light and dryness to these guys. So while I go put these on the bench, I'm gonna show you a really exciting find from yesterday at the nursery. Take a peek at what I found and a couple other big ones from a few months back. We'll talk about those next. anticipated. I thought my larch find a few months ago here at my favorite nursery was a good find and a big tree. So we got this big 20 gallon pot here and this uh, larch. I've done a little bit of uh, initial getting rid of some dead branches and cleanup. Uh, chopped it off a little bit up there. This was on sale for $20. So a small two gallon pot at this nursery is 26 bucks. This is, this is a 20 gallon pot, probably a, five, a seven to 10 size and 20 bucks. Still in the nursery pot. Not sure what we're gonna do with this one yet. Super big, uh, one and a half to two inch diameter down at the bottom. So I thought this was a big pot until today when I was shopping, the beast. So this guy right here, I didn't know what it was at first. I, I don't even know what I guessed it was at first, but it had really small, fine um, conifer needles. Um, and so I had a look at the tag, and it's a Suga canadensis, otherwise known as a hemlock. So I've got a hemlock variety, which I've been looking for for the last year or so. I was hiking up in the Adirondack Mountains with my brother recently, 
and we saw all these hemlocks and all the new growth, just a little bit in the forest, just that little bit, but I loved all the tiny foliage. And so this pot, in comparison, it's another size or two bigger. So this was in the discount section for 80 bucks. Because I spend so much money at this uh, nursery, they keep sending me coupons quarterly. So I had a $10 off coupon. So I got this hemlock in this 25 to 30 gallon pot for $70. When I went back to look at their store for all the other hemlocks, the size two pot, 109 bucks. And the size seven pot, five or seven, I don't remember now. For the hemlock, 180 bucks, 179.99. This pot is twice as big as the size seven if it was. So this is that 15 plus size pot, obviously 30 gallons, give or take 25, 30 gallons. 80 bucks, I had a $10 discount, $70 for my hemlock. So I'm super duper excited. I had two people watch me carry this out and say what a great find it was. One of them even said they didn't have enough room in their yard for this big of a tree. So they didn't pick it up, but they said it was such a great deal. Little do they know, and I didn't share that information, that I'm gonna chop this tree up and make it into a bonsai. And when I brought it up to the counter, they said, ooh, a good discount buy. What are you gonna do with that side right there? Maybe that's gonna have to face your house. No fear, it's gonna be cut off. <laughs> so we have this really weird branch growing straight out. There's some damage up here and here, and some, <coughs> excuse me, some branches right here that are kind of bent and uh, damaged here. But I envision cutting the tree somewhere around here at some point. And uh, we'll have to see. So for right now, I'm gonna spend the first uh, few moments of this tree's life in my backyard, in my little nursery, getting rid of some of the dead branches that are on the bottom. The bottom six inches to eight inches plus is all dead down here. So we're just gonna clean up this tree get rid of some dead branches and things we know for sure, like this sideways one we're not gonna use, just to do that now. And that's all I'm gonna do. We're gonna have to sit back and really think about the hemlock and get some more edumacation. Let's get to work. So the challenge for the tree this large is simply the weight of the tree. I was able to get it from the van into my wheelbarrow because I didn't have to drop very much distance. And then I slid it onto this, uh, this, uh, cement block that I have that gets it just off the ground where I can twist it around, not affect any more grass. But now I gotta circle it around and get rid of some dead stuff. fall-like weather has definitely changed. We're back up into the mid 80s and the dew points are back in the 60s. So I am a hot mess working on this tree, trying to get all the underbrush, the dead stuff out of here. We have some live branches that are just starting to be tapped into now. A couple that were buried real low into the bones, into the uh, nursery so soil, nursery pot. 
So I'm not sure what we're gonna find at the bottom of this trunk. But right now the trunk is about this size. And I've got one big branch coming off right here that I think is where the live stuff starts. So we're just gonna cut a few more pieces of the dead stuff that are up here, up inside the tree and see what we have to work with. I think that's all I'm gonna do for the bottom of the tree right now. As I lift it up, we can see right here, my hand grabbing on here. It's about how thick, almost the three fourths of my finger length there. We got some more dead stuff in there that we'll be plucking out in due time. But we're gonna go up higher into the tree and see what we might keep or not keep. So I have this branch that's growing really wonky out from the front here. Piece is broken off. And again, we're not going to keep much of the tree above this. In reading about the hemlocks, major prunes should be done in uh, late winter. So I'm not going to do any major cuts to this today, other than this broken branch right here, which is serving us no purpose, but just lay, lay in there. And this one as well, it's next to it. They were part of a branch that was just abused a little bit too much. And because I don't know where this tree will end up in the near future at all, we'll just leave that one there. This one's been uh, bent off as well from uh, transportation and people uh, looking at this tree, moving it around, who knows what. And that one just broke off. But that's it. That's all we're gonna do with the uh, hemlock today. We're gonna let this thing acclimate to its new location. Uh, we'll take care of this this fall and winter, give it some protection maybe if I can move it again to a, a spot that won't be uh, in direct wind. And uh, we'll do a chop late in the winter like they recommend and we'll cut this tree down to about here for starters. Take off about two feet and then we'll uh, see what the tree does next year. Um, we'll see about uh, spring. Now I do not have a pot that's big enough for a tree this big, nor will I anytime soon. So I will probably make a custom made box for this for its first couple years of life. So we'll get it out of the nursery soil, put some, uh, probably some pumice along with the existing soil and let it sit in that uh, box that I'll make for a year or two and that'll give me a couple years to uh, see if I can even come close to affording a pot that'll fit a tree that's this big of a tree. But we want to have the smooth transition from nursery, nursery pot into a box with some pumice to slowly get it acclimated to bonsai life. So we'll stop right there with the hemlock. So I'm super excited about the new hemlock. I'm a little nervous at the size. I really like growing bonsai trees from little trees and cuttings and watching them grow and mature and I clip and grow and uh, watch the progress of the growth. But there's always a part of me too, like I think a lot of bonsai enthusiasts, that want to have a big old looking tree. And so when I go to the nursery and I look at the discount section, I'm always keeping my eye out for a big tree that's going to be super cheap um, that I can maybe fix into a bonsai in several years. Now it's going to be maybe shorter amount of time working on it because the trunk is thick and where you want it to be. So then you get to work on refinement finally and um, still learning how to do that, of course. But the other problem with thick trees and the big trees is they already have their character. 
the trunk especially, right? You're not moving a trunk that's this thick. You're not moving a trunk that's half that thick with some species. You're not going to move it and get much movement. But where we get the movement, of course, is uh, the clip and grow. So if we can chop a tree and have this branch over here take the lead, the tree kind of sways this way. Then if it can grow this way after we chop a couple more years. And so there'll be some chopping in the future with um, the larch that I showed you. And then the hemlock, um, chops aren't as easy with uh, pine trees and uh, the conifers. Um, but if there's new growth growing and back buds and new leader branches, you can cut to those leader branches and hopefully that can take over over the course of several years. So since we're talking big trees, I move away my larch from being collected and my other larches from being collected that are sitting out in the sun and we'll expose the Colorado blue spruce here. So a few weeks back when I was looking at the uh, discount section of my favorite nursery in town, I saw this great big messy Colorado spruce. And when I looked down at its navari and its bottom part, it was nice and thick and it had this nice little bend right there. So if you can see, that goes up this way and bends this way and then it starts to come back this way. So this large tree already has some movement in it. Now I have Colorado blue spruce in my yard. I have two big ones. And when I've cut branches back and thinned out the tree at the bottom from death and just uh, make it a little more uh, space for, for our yard stuff and, and get more sun to some areas. Some of the trees that were exposed to more sun started getting back budding way deeper in in the branches. So of course it's always exciting to see back budding and knowing that if I get a big tree like this, I can scale it back and hopefully get some more back budding. So as you can see with this big Colorado blue, there was a nasty break right here. So I just cut the rest of it off. And then this one, um, I don't know if this one, this one had some, some damage to it as well. And people probably didn't want this tree because of all this damage, but I have the rest of the tree that I left alone. But I went ahead and just chopped these two off and we'll fix those up over time in a better time of year to work on this tree. And uh, we'll see what's gonna happen with this one. Now this only has about an inch and a half trunk at the bottom compared to that almost two inch trunk hemlock we just looked at but this will be uh, in a much bigger pot again too, so I have to look at my pot sizes and order some bigger pots, and um, we'll get this blue spruce going as well. So, when you're at the nursery store and you're going to the discount section, I went today with all kinds of excitement. I didn't know I was gonna find, and there was nothing there that I was even remotely interested in until I found that hemlock, only one on the lot, and priced pretty amazingly. One of the most expensive trees I've purchased at this nursery to date uh, I never usually spend more than 30. Um, 40, I think 50 might have been the highest before. And so now this one at 70 was, uh, this one was 30. This is uh, probably close to a $200 tree in this size pot. Um, it might even be like 249, 259 for this tree. And I got it for 30 bucks. And yeah, it has this damage and uh, we're just gonna do our best to keep it alive and, 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 and have a future Colorado blue spruce bonsai. So, the trees are out there to be found. You just gotta do a little digging around and you'll find some great trees as well. And what I've heard from many bonsai enthusiasts who like to go to nurseries. I saw this hemlock today and I passed it up twice. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna leave here and I'm not gonna spend that money. I'm not gonna get that tree, but I had that $10 discount. But I've heard time and time again, and I've preached this myself too now. And so I said, you know what? I love that tree. I wanted a hemlock really bad. The base of it is super, super great. Got great old looking bark at the bottom now. It looks old and majestic. And I'm just gonna get it. Because if you walk away from it, it definitely won't be there tomorrow. Um, you find something you like, you just get it. So we have some big trees to contend with. So that'll be probably a video next spring, possibly the repotting of the giants. We've got the blue Colorado blue spruce, We've got the um, larch, that was a really big one, and now we have the monster hemlock. So stay tuned for those videos. Everything in the backyard, on the deck, on the benches, everywhere, top to bottom, left to right, north to south, <laughs> got plenty of rain. Here are the unofficial rain gauges. This bucket completely uh, filled with about an inch, a little more than an inch of water in this tub as well. 
This was empty and this was empty before the rains from four o'clock this morning. So a solid inch of rain in our area. All of Minnesota, very big system, a lot of moisture, got a, a lot of, uh, of our drought partially taken care of. It's been a really tough year, extreme drought in much of Minnesota. So this rainfall in the last 12 hours has been absolutely needed and uh, we're certainly happy it came. So the trees are loving life. Everything's been flushed through. We're gonna get that real good uh, filtering of all the stuff that our trees are dealing with with this rainwater that just soaked all of our trees. All the succulents are back on the bench and we are ready for some sunshine, hopefully here soon in the afternoon to get things uh, popping again. And this one right here just got a new fresh coat of rain um, after uh, doing a little bit of that trimming yesterday and uh, looking forward to seeing what the hemlock is going to do for us down the road. So I'm uh, super excited about that as well as uh, the larch, the big larch and the um, Colorado blue spruce. Super excited. Hey, thanks for watching. Click that like, subscribe if you haven't already. Take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one.